Just two weeks after the launch of the first piece of the International Space Station, the Russian-built Zarya module, it was time for on-orbit construction of this massive complex to begin. The first assembly flight to the ISS brought the first U.S. element to this new international outpost, a small connecting node called Unity. The launches of Zarya and Unity began the second phase of the International Space Station program, which would see the addition of several pieces to the outpost, culminating in the first crews to occupy the ISS on a permanent basis. Unity was the first of three cylindrical connecting nodes for the outpost. At 4.3 meters wide and 5.5 meters long, this 11,900 kilogram module was built by Boeing at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama between 1994 and 1997 at a cost of roughly $300 million. The pressure vessel is made of aluminum and stainless steel and has six common berthing mechanism ports, two axial and four radial, to allow for additional modules to be attached. On the outside of the module are various layers of panels, insulation, and debris shielding. According to NASA, Unity contains over 50,000 mechanical items, 216 lines to carry fluids and gases, and 121 internal and external electrical cables, using nearly 10 kilometers of wire. It was launched into space inside the payload bay of the Space Shuttle Endeavour during its STS-88 mission on December 4, 1998. Connected to it were two pressurized mating adapters that would convert the two berthing mechanisms to smaller diameter docking ports compatible with the Space Shuttle and Zarya module. Once in space, the STS-88 crew used the shuttle's robotic arm to remove the Unity module and its docking adapters to attach it to the orbiter's docking system. Then on December 6th, Endeavour's crew rendezvoused with Zarya and used the robotic arm to capture the module, attaching it to the other end of Unity via the other mating adapter. With the firing of Endeavour's thrusters, the two modules were mated together at 1.07 a.m. UTC, December 7, 1998. Over the course of five days, three spacewalks were performed by astronauts to install the power and data connectors between Unity and Zarya, as well as to manually free several antennas on Zarya that didn't deploy after launch. Once powered up, the ISS was entered for the first time on December 10, 1998 by NASA astronaut Bob Cabana and Russian cosmonaut Sergei Krikalov. The other four members of the STS-88 crew followed shortly thereafter. Krikalov would ultimately be the commander of the first long-duration crew of the ISS, Expedition 1, in November of 2000. In addition to being the first connecting node for the ISS, Unity provided much of the early equipment needed to connect with NASA's tracking and data relayed satellite system in order to enable 24-7 communications. Zarya, by contrast, could only connect with various Russian ground stations across the globe. During the course of ISS assembly, the Unity module would feature prominently as a major hub. The aft berthing port has the PMA-1 and the Zarya module permanently installed. The Zenith space-facing port has been occupied by the Z-1 truss since the year 2000. Between 2000 and early 2001, the Earth-facing Nader port hosted the PMA-3 module. Meanwhile, the forward port saw PMA-2 attached to it between 1998 and 2001, before the Destiny Laboratory was permanently attached. Looking from the front, the starboard port has been the location of the Quest airlock since 2001. In March 2001, PMA-3 was relocated to the port side of Unity until 2007, when it was moved back to allow for the temporary installation of the Harmony module. PMA-3 would be moved to various ports between 2007 and 2017, before it was permanently located on the Harmony module in 2017. In 2011, the permanent multi-purpose module was installed on the Earth-facing port, before it was moved to the forward port of the Tranquility module. Today, the Earth-facing port periodically sees visiting cargo ships such as Northrop Grumman's Cygnus spacecraft. Inside Unity are spaces for four international standard payload racks, which are a uniform standard for all the modules on the U.S. segment of the ISS. The early years had racks for life support and communications equipment. However, today they contain stowage racks for food and supplies, and a galley where the crew typically gathers for meals. After the STS-88 mission left the outpost on December 13, 1998, the fledgling outpost would be visited several more times over the next two years, as astronauts and cosmonauts worked to ready the outpost for its first long-duration crew, Expedition 1. It began Phase 3 of construction, which would last longer than anyone anticipated. Despite never being in the same hemisphere while being built, the Zarya and Unity modules were mated together in space perfectly, a testament to the amazing collaboration and skill among all ISS partners. What's your favorite part about the early ISS? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, please like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and follow Orbital Velocity on Twitter and Facebook. You can also head over to orbital-velocity.com for even more space-related content, including a monthly newsletter called The Space Capsule. Links are in the description below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, 
at Astra. <laughs>